You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Rollins. Dr. Rollins, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. It's nice to be here. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, which is a hot topic these days, uh, tell me about your center, Western Colorado. The Integrated Medicine Center is a collection of different practitioners, myself included, uh, representing the medical wing of things. I have several partners who are nurse practitioners. Uh, we also have a naturopathic physician. Uh, we have an acupuncturist who specializes in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. We have a homeopathic and massage therapy specialist. We also have a registered dietitian, and one of my favorites is uh, an exercise physiologist that uh, quite okay. a lot of my patients take advantage of. Now you call it integrative medicine, so define that. Help me understand. Well, integrative medicine to me has several meanings in the in the traditional sense, and what you'll find at most universities, it, integrative just means integrating different uh, types of practitioners. So we have medical specialists, we have naturopathic doctors, we have acupuncturists who do traditional Chinese medicine, okay. we have dietitians, we have exercise physiologists, we have behavioral psychologists. We have all these different disciplines integrated together into our center. And the, and the unique thing is integrative medicine is not just seeing all these different practitioners. It's the practitioners coming together to actually collaborate on your care. Is that right? Now, so in your practice, who is the typical patient that is coming in for hormone replacement therapy? Probably the, the typical patient for me might be the uh, recently menopausal or perimenopausal woman. Let's say she's 48, 50, 52 years of age, somewhere in there, starting to have classic symptoms, you know, night, night sweats and the hot flashes and these kind of things, um, seeking relief of these symptoms. And this brings up an interesting point okay. because I explain to patients, these are withdrawal symptoms. When, you, when, you, when your estrogen levels are dropping and your pituitary glands telling your little ovary to make more estrogen, you have these pulses of the hormone that causes hot flashes and night sweats. Is that and right? So that stops after a year or two in most women. Uh, some women it goes on longer, but usually it stops. And, you know, so that's the first sign of what, hormonal decline? That typically, is, that typically is the first sign of estrogen decline. Okay. And that is a withdrawal symptom that will go away in time. That is not the reason necessarily to take bioidentical hormones. Okay. The reason to take bioidentical hormones is to prevent disease, to, to maintain quality of life. And so when I'm treating someone that's 52 years of age, yes, they may have a lot of symptoms that are quite disturbing and it's great to get those better. At the same time, we're thinking 30 years ahead. We're looking at estrogen cutting the risk of heart disease and Alzheimer's in half. So the other type of patients that you're seeing, so menopausal women, yeah, another and classic is women. What, what most women don't realize is that some of their hormones start declining in late 30s, early 40s. Progesterone is estrogen's sister. And progesterone okay. is a hormone that starts to decline normally late 30s, early 40s in most women perhaps. How do they know? How do they know if uh, you're low on progesterone? The, one of the biggest symptoms is they become more estrogen dominant. It's not that they're making more estrogen, it's just that they're not making as, as much progesterone. And again, they're sisters, they complement, they balance each other, they, they antagonize one another so, sometimes. Um, when women's progesterone starts to fall, their menstrual cycles may get heavier, more okay. cramping, more premenstrual syndrome, more uterine fibroids that leads to a hysterectomy commonly, sadly, more breast cysts that lead to biopsies. And these can be alleviated with progesterone cycling, simple now, as you, that. You know when they say progesterone makes w women feel better. Is yeah, there truth yeah, to that? Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Think of estrogen and progesterone like sisters, and estrogen okay. will stimulate the body. It stimulates the skin, the breast, the vaginal tissue, the uterus. It stimulates the brain, so women can think clear and they feel good. Progesterone calms all of that, so it keeps estrogen from running rampant in the breast and in the uterus and over-stimulating that tissue. At the level of the brain, progesterone has to be one of my favorite hormones to help women with because when you give them progesterone, it calms the brain. It complements estrogen. Is it good estrogen. for things like anxiety? Very much light so. Light depression? Really? Progesterone, progesterone stimulates GABA receptors in the brain, the exact same receptors that Xanax and Valium stimulate. Really? Now, uh, is so I know, about natural hormones. Mm -hmm. Should a woman wait, and I did some research, that I, I mm -hmm. guess menopause can be defined by missing a period for mm -hmm. six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. Should they wait? I mean, are women coming in uh, you know, way before no, that, no, no. should they come in before that? Oh, absolutely, that? absolutely. I love catching women in their early 40s when they're just starting to have some early changes in their hormones. Sometimes it's not that far out of balance, sometimes it's drastically out of balance. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of women I've seen who went through this 10 year period where their progesterone dropped out, they didn't know, they just suffered through it until they finally suffered got... Suffered like what, they just feel lousy? 
lousy. Hit. Low energy? Does it do, do, doesn't I mean, so much get into low energy per se as much as strictly speaking with the with the ovarian hormones. It's more about the menstrual cycle. It's more okay. about estrogen dominance. And so they suffer in the sense that they have anxiety. They feel irritable. They can't sleep. They're they're estrogen overstimulated only because there's no progesterone. So you give these women progesterone for a week or two or even three out of every month, and it typically will just stop all those physical symptoms. How fast can a woman feel better, by the way? First month, first cycle, really? quite frequently. What do they say? The very to you? first month, they're very happy. <laughs> they call and say, I mean, I mean, do you ever hear stories like, you know, I I've had back, I feel much better. I've had marriage. dozens of women uh, cancel their hysterectomy. Really? Because it changed their physiology so much that they they stopped going down a path that they assumed was inevitable. Okay, so you're not just re replacing like just one hormone, two hormones. No, that's right. That's okay. a, and that's a great question about one hormone versus several hormones. A long time ago, I realized that you cannot look at just one of these hormones and ignore the others. If you're low on your cortisol, for example, cortisol is a very important adrenal hormone. It doesn't necessarily decline with aging like some of the other ones, but people get into pathological conditions where cortisol might be low, and cortisol helps our blood pressure, our blood sugar, and our immune system. So when I look at hormones, I have to look at multiple systems. As an example, if you're low on cortisol, an adrenal hormone, then you're not going to tolerate the correct amount of thyroid which is your, one of your metabolic hormones. And if you're low on thyroid, none of your sex hormones are going to op work optimally. You're not going to metabolize them properly, and your receptors are not going to be as sensitive to them. So it's very important to step back and look at all the hormone systems and get them all in balance and in the, in the correct order as well. Okay, testosterone in women. I don't even think of women as having testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. How important is that hormone? How does a woman know if, uh, if it's low or needs to be replaced? Testosterone is very important in women, just like in men. Clearly, they don't need quite as much as men, but testosterone builds muscle, builds bone, burns fat, has a lot to do with your sex drive, has a lot to do with your sense of security, confidence, motivation, get up and go. And really? it's just as important in women as it is in men. A lot of women get their estrogen or, and or progesterone replaced and never get their testosterone replaced. And so they suffer specific detriments because of that. So how do you give the hormones? Are they pills? Are they injections? Well, let me tell you about that because the way you give the hormones is very important. You cannot just simply give these hormones in a pill that you swallow. Sometimes that's okay, sometimes it's not. And it's important to really recognize that. Most doctors around the country and around the world who know about bioidentical hormones tend to use creams. We'll use creams that you put on your skin, you rub them in. And they just go right through? They're absorbed directly in your into your bloodstream. Because when you think about it, your hormones do not go through your digestive tract where they see your liver to get metabolized. That's called first pass metabolism. And that does a lot of things that is not normal. Um, so when we give hormones, we like to skip the first pass metabolism that you get when you swallow a pill and it sees the liver first thing. That's not natural. So when we give it topically, it's absorbed right into your bloodstream. Um, a second way that, that I use a lot is a tablet that dissolves right under your tongue. Um, okay. We use that twice a day so you get smoother blood levels. That's very slick. You can take it and pop it under your tongue and you're out the door and it's very easy. Um, so we put estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone eventually into one tablet or one cream. We tend to start out with them separately so that we can independently adjust them. That's a really important point. What about energy? I mean, is that one of the you know, main I things? You know, I get people coming improved? to see me that are so tired, they want to exercise, they want to feel better, they want to build muscle, they want to be more active, but they just feel too lousy to get up and go do it. Men and women. And when you get to be 55 or 60, you do not have to feel lousy. You can actually regain a lot of that youthful energy that's, that's normal when we're 20, 30, 40 years of age. Is it hard for people to... As I'm sitting here, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a little skeptical, period, about just about all, you know, all the medical topics we cover. But, but this is one of those that I always hear people talking about how great they feel mm -hmm. and, and this and mm -hmm. that. Do, do people think mm -hmm. you're exaggerating mm -hmm. sometimes? I'm amazed at the feedback that I get from patients, and it's exciting and it's encouraging to learn more about this area. When you have people who walk back into your office in their first follow-up visit and say, I can't believe how much better I feel, thank you or when a woman says, I haven't felt this good in 25 years, or when a man says, thank you, I haven't felt this good in 15 years. This is exciting. Okay, now you flew in uh, here in, in San Diego, in California. It's mainstream out here. I mean, mm -hmm. when you hear people over 40, they're taking bioidentical hormones. Mm. And, uh, but in your area, how responsive are they to this? Are they more skeptical? 
and and what and what message mm -hmm. you want to mm -hmm. send to them? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what well, do you, you want know, them to know? Where I practice and live in Western Colorado is not Southern California, and this is a newer concept for a lot of patients. But you know, what's really really neat is that my experience with this started in a very rural, very conservative medical area, and by being people's physician for 15 years and simply explaining to them about these hormones, it makes perfect sense. So you're and, sold on this. And they, I mean, you believe they this. jump on it. I have patients who are doing so much better. They don't. They not only feel better, which is important, but their di their heart disease is under better control. Their diabetes is under better control. They're building back their bone if they have osteoporosis. They're imp they're seeing things in their lives get better. Ailments are getting better.